All right, guys, we're back. We are on whatever episode it is. I don't even know anymore. So mm -hmm. uh, we're veterans at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Colton Mertens is here. Colton is uh, one of our newest athletes this year. Colton and I actually go back, I mean, six, seven years. Yeah. Well, Iowa boys back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, we're really excited to have Colton here, though. This has been something, I think, a long time in the making, which is cool. He's actually fresh off 24.1 as of a couple hours ago. How you feeling right now? Um, <clears throat> I feel like I've recovered pretty well. My triceps are still just pretty smoked. And, uh, yeah, if you guys don't know, Nick and I actually competed on a team together for a comp before. So we go there's way, some, way back. There's uh, some good photos out <clears throat> there of that. I think there's, there's a good story there. Um, <laughs> do you remember the pistol workout in that comp? No, not really. I don't really remember any of the workouts. To be <laughs> well, you've done that competition about 10 times. So, mm. But, no, there was, a, there was a workout where it was a chipper. And I think there were mm. 60 pistols in the middle of it. And like normal people, we got together and we said, all right, how are we going to break this up? And Colton, you just looked me dead in the eye and you said, oh, I'll do them. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> and I saw this man do 60 pistols in 60 seconds probably. Mm. So if you guys don't mm. know, we, uh, we've got one of the fittest squatters, one of the fittest. Best squats in the game. <laughs> best squats in the game, fittest mm. burbier in the game. Uh, so you clearly yeah. liked the workout that came out yesterday. Mm. Um, we, we did some training afterwards as well. You're brand mm. new to Proven. You've got our individual coach, Joey, who is brand new with you. Mm. How's that been going so far? Uh, it's been really good. Um, one thing before we get to that, I listen to the, the training think tank podcast a lot, and they keep saying Jake Berman's the best at burpees. You guys, he's not on my level. So we'll see what the scores are like after this workout. It's a very burpee-based workout, but I just want to let you guys know you need to quit saying that. But, um, All right, <clears throat> we're getting into it. We're just going to start throwing <laughs> shots out here. So whatever you need to say, you keep saying it. <laughs> you know, yeah, started working with Joey and Proven right after Wadapalooza. We were talking and getting onboarded before that. And then, <clears throat> yeah, it's only been, I don't know, like five weeks or something like that. But uh, it's just been really nice not to have to mess with any of my own programming. Mm -hmm. uh, I just pull it up on the app, right on the whiteboard, and get going. And I'm really surprised that, like, so obviously we talked at meetings about the things that I wanted to work on and where I needed to be before the season started. And just really shocked at how, like, quickly certain aspects of my fitness have been improving. Just like focusing a lot on like pulling strength, whether from like deadlifts or power in the Olympic lifts, and that's gotten so much better. And then a really big focus has been running, and we just tested like a 3K run recently, and that went way better than expected. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see where we're going to be at come semis and games. So let's go back. What year, mm -hmm. let's talk about like how you got into CrossFit. So mm -hmm. like what year was your first official, let's say when you did the Open for the first time, or how'd you hear about CrossFit yeah. the first time? <clears throat> I remember I was cleaning my room in high school and I just had ESPN or something on and uh, the CrossFit games or some kind of CrossFit competition was on the, the TV just like in the background and I started watching it and it was then I decided I want to try and do that someday. So then I got into college and my second semester I just did like a Google search for gyms in the area and found CrossFit Kilo in Cedar Falls and I walked in there like middle of January and then did the open like three weeks later and started doing the competitor training and everything <clears throat> pretty much right away. Cause as soon as I, before I started, I knew I wanted to compete and wanted to be a games athlete. I feel like a lot, of, like a lot of people, when they get into this CrossFit, they have aspirations to compete eventually. And um, so yeah, I started in 2017 in January. So this I think is like my eighth open or something like that, which is weird. Cause it feels, it still feels very new. Yeah, that's so – if you guys don't know, Kilo Trained was who you were with before, and that's mm -hmm. actually a gym that was – we were only about an hour away from each other. Mm -hmm. So you and Taylor trained some while we were there. We were up there. And, like, if you want to talk about some of the toughest athletes I've ever mm -hmm. met in my life, you guys had them all. Like, Armin, yeah. who ran the gym, is one of the coolest, most down-to-earth, but also scariest men I've ever <laughs> met in my life. Uh, Luke, who we know really well, and, and even Street was from there. All you guys mm -hmm. kind of – found your own path as really good athletes so it's been cool to see because like homegrown is the the uh, statement mm -hmm. right for kilo yeah. train which is really cool yeah they were really good kind of like a big point of emphasis on like just taking the athletes to walk into the gym and developing them for their teams and everything like that and now kilo two is doing that as well and yeah we had the competitor or mental toughness camp whatever you want to call it every year where it'd be like a 24 hour just like beat down doing workouts pretty much nonstop and things like that to to develop like mental 
strength and those kind of things. And Armin ran that and it was kind of like <clears throat> a throwback to his time in the military. And he's like, yeah, I, so, um, I remember when I first started, I was starting to get kind of good, but it was disappointing because I'm like the third fittest dude in the gym because like Street <laughs> and Luke were always better than me. So that was annoying for a long time, but I think <laughs> and I'm, they let you know about it too. <laughs> like, so Austin and Micah were there probably at that mm -hmm. time too. And those guys were like, you would never know it. The fittest dudes <laughs> around, like people would have the most unassuming mm -hmm. people on the floor, especially yeah. when they got on teams together. And it was hilarious. I think <laughs> it was one of the biggest realizations for me in Iowa was how long everyone had been doing CrossFit. Like I came from Michigan, I would say is a newer state when it comes to stuff. Mm -hmm. Everyone I talked to in Iowa had been like, ah, tw 2009, 2010, <laughs> everyone had been around for 10 years. Yeah, it was crazy. I remember seeing a picture that Kilo 2 posted of their regional games team. Um, it might have been like the 2018 regionals, and they were all doing like the bicep flex, and everybody was giving Austin shit because he had the, the smallest arms on the team or – I can't remember which, of the which men and the women. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but he's he's surprisingly strong and he's very springy. He's got Duke can jump really high. He's got great <clears throat> power in his Olympic lifts. But yeah, like Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that last night. He's still competing. I mm -hmm. mean, what year did he probably start? He's been around forever. Oh yeah. He was on several of the games teams back at the original Kilo when he was teams of six. Mm -hmm. And um they were at he had his he's been the coach of the Kilo two team and they just repeated games appearances and going for the third straight now. And, uh, yeah, he's holding himself together and still getting fitter. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So that was 2017, you said, right? So that's when you mm -hmm. got into it. What year was it when you realized, okay, like mm -hmm. this might be my career now. Like I, I want to finally put all my eggs in this basket, and I think this is a possibility. Um, I wanted to – that was my goal or my ambition right from the beginning was I wanted to eventually do that. In like some late 2018, I qualified for Dubai. Mm -hmm. I think I got like third on the qualifier, and then I got to the event in person. I got like probably third to last or something <laughs> like that. A lot of running in that one. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, just yeah. The, that f specific qualifier was really good for me in terms of the movements. It was like chest to bar, hang squat cleans, things like that. And then we got there and like, oh, we're running, swimming, carrying yokes, and like shit. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> in the desert too. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, because that's, that's always an event that's in like the middle of winter, right? So mm -hmm. when you're in the Midwest, it's always coming from like snow to 100 degrees in the middle of the desert. Yeah, yeah, it was it was wild. It was definitely a different experience, and just like um, yeah, I definitely took my lumps and took it as a good learning experience. And <clears throat> I was like, well, okay, hopefully I never have a competition that bad again as far as performance goes. And um, so. It, then after that, I went to I qualified for Rogue and Granite Games and did well at Rogue. Then like a week later, went to Granite Games, didn't do so well, but was still just like on that path trying to break through individually. And then 21 is when I qualified for my first games as an individual. And <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of when I was like, okay, this is like I can actually do this because there was a lot of doubt because I was farming and training at home. Yep. And, you know, the general consensus is, People would be like, well, you probably are not going to qualify for the games while you're farming all day and you're training alone in your garage or whatever and, and things like that. So just like knowing that, like, okay, it is actually possible, I can do this was like a big help mentally at so that I, point. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. one of the coolest things about you, man, that I've noticed ever since day one is no matter what anybody says, you're going to do your thing. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter what the – general population says about you right you have a goal you know what you want to do and you know what you want to accomplish uh some of the listeners they may not know you actually work on your family farm you've mm -hmm. done that for probably your whole life right i'm sure the minute you could start walking there yeah. putting you to work yeah. um tell them kind of like what a normal day looks like especially when you were in college like that mm -hmm. was even crazier because you had to do both yeah <clears throat> so um yeah in college i went to I went to school at the university of northern iowa it's about two and a half hours from home and pretty much on a regular schedule I'd come back home like every other weekend and work on the farm I'd be back during like Christmas spring break and summers and all that and then graduated college um, the plan was to come back home and work on the farm so I did that and end up having to kind of build out like a home gym because there wasn't at the time there wasn't anything within like 45 minutes and just like with the farm schedule it's a lot better to be able to come straight home from the farm and just get started on training. So <clears throat> there was a lot of times, especially when I first started, where it'd be 
especially like in the summer, if we're in the fields or something where it'd be 12 plus hour days, we'd start like at 430 in the morning, I'd get back and it'd be dark and I'd go train in the shed. And I mean, that was really, really hard mentally for a long time. But now um, I don't put in nearly as many hours on the farm, still there every day. But there's a lot of times where just kind of the way that the farm has transitioned lately, been getting more land for crops and we've been pulling back on the livestock. So it's a little bit less labor intensive for me. So um, there's like a lot of days where I can get in and out and start training early afternoon. I typically can start training like one or two o'clock in the evening. And it's been a lot of just like focusing on how to adjust my diet and recovery routine. Um, <clears throat> Cause it's not gonna look the same as other athletes who are training uh, full time. So just been, I started working with a nutritionist and that's been helping a ton with getting those things kind of ironed out. And yeah, it's a different path than most other athletes take. So I have to realize that a lot of things that I do are going to look different and just be confident that I'm doing what I need to do. Yeah. So I think that's, that's something that's really cool because mm -hmm. that story is not like anyone else. I think in mm -hmm. the entire sport, I know like Marcus Hendren back in the day, he worked on a farm. Yeah. Was he somebody that you like looked <clears throat> up to back in the day? At the time I didn't know him. It was just like, um, yeah, I knew like some of the smaller athletes like Josh Bridges were kind mm -hmm. of an inspiration being on like the smallest games athlete. But um, for the most part, it was just like, this is going to be different than what anybody else is doing. But I just had like the confidence and self-belief that, you know, <clears throat> it's going to be different than them. And they don't think it's really possible to do, but that's because they're not me. Like if they're in my situation, I believe they would fail. But I think that I could do it. If anybody could do it, I believe that I was the one and yeah, I ended up getting it done. So I know we, like, back in the day, you told us it was always farm first, fitness mm -hmm. second, right? Like, even your family mm -hmm. let you know, this is great you're doing this, mm -hmm. but the farm mm -hmm. has to come first. Like, that probably had to make you really dial in on what you were doing from a scheduling standpoint from mm -hmm. you probably didn't have a lot of free time, right? Like, when it was yeah. coming down to those things. Mm -hmm. Do you look back on that today and realize that made you into the athlete that you were? Yeah, it definitely helped develop a lot of discipline and just, like, I – you know, some athletes complain about, like, oh, I don't want to have to go to bed on time or I don't want to, like, turn off Netflix or whatever. But, yeah, for a long time it was, like, I'd farm, come home, eat really quick, and then start training, eat dinner, and then straight to bed. And it was like that for a long time, but I helped develop a good discipline. So where now I have a little bit more free time and I can spend that time. Like, I'll get done training, eat dinner, and then get right into recovery, work, rehab stuff, and then when it's time to go to bed, straight to bed, get my sleep. And... Yeah, a lot of those lessons help a lot. And also just knowing when you are really tired or fatigued from the farm that you can still have the ability to push really hard, even if it's just mentally, even if your body doesn't have it that day. But also just like surprising yourself when, you know, a lot of times I'll go into a workout like, man, I'm just tired from like getting up early or, you know, the, the pigs were ornery that day. So it was <laughs> really had to do a lot of work. Um, but then surprising yourself with your performance in the gym and then being able to carry that into competition like it may, maybe it's like the third day and I'm kind of beat up, but I know what my body's capable of even when I'm tired. And I think that maybe some athletes, when they get into that position, they're not used to it if their training environment is a little too mm -hmm. comfortable or convenient. So that I think is something that's helped me as well. Yeah, I think that do you see that it's a double-edged sword, right? Because as mm -hmm. we professionalize as a sport and more people are doing this for their full-time jobs, more camps pop up like where you are with mm. us now where things are a little bit more structured you're able to do more of what you need to do as an athlete do you think younger athletes need to go through kind of those struggles and obstacles of finding their own way making sure that they're doing what they want to do yeah definitely <clears throat> they need to make sure that they want it and realize it's not going to be easy and there's going to be a lot of hard things even if you do have the opportunity to train full-time we've seen a lot of athletes struggle with it mentally but, um, you know, if it didn't for you, go hang drywall for 10 hours a day and see how you like that, too. <laughs> um, I mean, it is a privilege to get to do this sport at a high level. And um, <clears throat> fortunately for the athletes that have, have had a hard time mentally, they've had the, you know, the finances and the opportunities to take a year off and kind of collect themselves. Um, you know, just looking at it kind of from the perspective of, like, there's a lot of people that go through rough times in life and they don't really have the opportunity to say, hey, I'm going to chill for a year and mm -hmm. find myself. They still have to get up and go to work and pay their bills and things like that. And just realize, um, yeah, like you don't have to quit when things get tough and they are going to get tough. And whether it's in fitness or if it's in life, things are going to get difficult. So 
Yeah, try and, you know, CrossFit is one of those things to where you can build up an armor by doing something that is uncomfortable and challenging, but it's in a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you lose a workout, you know, the consequences aren't that, aren't that bad. Um, but you can develop a mental strength from doing these hard things and then take that with you in other places in life. So when you are in a position in life where, you know, you're between a rock and a hard place and there is no easy way out, you have that mental fortitude built up to where you can get through it and, you know, do the things that you need to do and still operate. Just clip mm -hmm. all that, Brandon. We'll just use that and mm -hmm. cut it from there. <laughs> that's awesome, man. I think that's mm -hmm. like you just nailed it. Like mm -hmm. that's – we actually get to do this because it's an opportunity. It's not mm -hmm. something that any of us are obligated to. It's not something that at the end of the day mm -hmm. competing in Madison or competing in mm -hmm. Dallas doesn't really help our world, right? Mm -hmm. It's great. It's a sport, and it's something that mm -hmm. can really inspire people. But from a day-to-day -day basis, it's got to have something that gets you through the day – at more mm -hmm. than just a physical level like it has mm -hmm. to be something mental that you are doing for yourself for one mm -hmm. but also for something in the future like i think a lot of great athletes like you look at tia she's been able to build her career around the fact that she wants to set up her children mm -hmm. to have great lives for the rest of their lives and i think unless you have that intrinsic value and motivation to to bring people up in your life and your mm -hmm. family to a better place it's gonna be really hard to get to work and really grind every single day, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's really cool. So when you guys talk about like, Allie is your girlfriend mm -hmm. and you guys have been together for how long? Uh, like four years now. Four years. Sorry yeah. if I put you on the spot <laughs> there, that's good. We'll double check, <laughs> fact check that. Um, but she's also a games athlete, so mm -hmm. she's on a team, right? Yeah, CrossFit Kilo too. She's on their team the past two years and they're getting ready to make their, trying to make their third run to the games. and. Yeah, she's been making a lot of progress, and it's nice having somebody around that has similar values. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like uh, before I met her, I kind of I realized like I'm not gonna be in a relationship or have a girlfriend that's not kind of in fitness or yep. like understands it because it's just the person or the lifestyles is gonna be so different. Like I can't be with somebody who is wanting to go out all the time on the weekends and stay up late because it's just not gonna work with my lifestyle at the time. So meeting her and just having someone to kind of go through that stuff with and even do things like <clears throat> sit in the cold tub with <clears throat> and things like that, they're not so fun. Yeah. It's a little bit more enjoyable with a, with somebody else around. Did you guys mm. meet at Kilo or where did you guys meet? Mm. Yeah, we met at CrossFit Kilo. Um, I think it was just like uh, maybe it was one of the skills classes or something. I think we were working on muscle ups or whatever, and I went up and started talking to her and yeah, I went from there. So you <laughs> pulled the trigger first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out pretty well for you. There yeah. you go. So you guys uh, you guys are on the farm <clears throat> together then, <clears throat> and then you have your own gym now. How was that process? Because it looks pretty cool in there. Yeah, it's finally getting to the point where it's pretty much done. It was, uh, it was a long process getting there. We did a lot of the construction ourselves, and, yeah, it just took, took a long time. But, um, yeah, it's basically a 60 by or 64 by 40 foot structure and there's a big wall down the middle and half of it is house and half of it's gym so it's is perfect it, you're, you live in there too mm -hmm. oh that's yeah. awesome i had no idea <laughs> about that do you find it's weird at all to kind of live <laughs> in the same space that you train um not really because because um i was training in a garage before so it's kind of just like a really big garage gym yeah essentially <laughs> but um yeah it's really nice just like saving time with commuting commuting or things like that and or being able to like, okay, I'm done with this piece. I can go walk over to the house, to the kitchen real quick and get something to eat. But um, yeah, it's been really nice just to have everything that we need there and not having to do like rope climbs in a tree anymore or like wall balls on the side of the house. Yeah, the if snow, you guys have never seen this, um, there are some <laughs> old videos of ring muscle ups on trees and rope climbs <laughs> on trees. You can go look at those, which are hilarious. Yeah, I'm glad those days are behind me. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, the quality of training has improved a ton. And I've also have have an air runner now, so I don't have to do like trying to do running intervals outside in the snow is not ideal. So yeah, that's made a big difference too. Yeah, and if you guys don't know about Iowa weather, it's like the worst of the worst on both ends, right? <laughs> yeah. So you go from just mm -hmm. ice and snow to just mm -hmm. hot at all times. You get like maybe two months in there. That's nice. Yeah, no, this winter was particularly uh, cold for a while. We got like four or five feet of snow <laughs> within like a month. <clears throat> we have a uh, so our dog pen is outside. And it's a four foot fence, so it turned into a two foot fence for a while yeah. with all the snow. <laughs> but um yeah, the dogs love to love digging around in it and so yeah, you guys yeah. have you guys have wiener dogs. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a weenie dad as mm -hmm. well, which we, we bond over. Mm -hmm. Um and you, they just had puppies? 
Yeah, we've got uh, five winter dogs. We got the male named Otis. Then we got the females are Mabel, Martha, Margo, and Millie. And Millie just had puppies a couple of days ago. She had four. Um, so yeah, Allie's back home taking care of them. But um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun hanging out with them. They come inside. Do they come every in the night. gym while you guys are training? <laughs> Not typically, unless we're just doing like some easy skills work. They usually keep them out of there. But um, they have a heated doghouse outside in a big pen that they hang out in during the day when we're at work and training. And then in the evenings, they come out and sleep on the couch and whatnot. Hang out with us for a while. So last year, um, remind me what you came in last year at the games? Uh, 18th. Okay, and that was your mm-hmm. best placing, correct? Mm-hmm. So we're going into 2024. You've got all these things lined up to where you're moving more towards being able to do this full time. Mm-hmm. You've got your own gym now. You've got Proven, our mm-hmm. camp. Um, what kind of difference have you noticed? I know you talked about Joey a little bit, but you've been here for two days now and you've mm-hmm. been around some more training partners. So we've got mm-hmm. Sydney, we've got Sydney, Tia and Luis. Yep. Do you think that that environment, obviously you're going to be coming back and forth here for a bit mm-hmm. will help you a lot as we move towards the games? Yeah, I've definitely, you know, um, it, it took a while to kind of, I tried to adapt to like a good mindset for training alone. Cause I am alone most of the time. So it's been a little bit weird being here. Like I'm in a place that isn't my my garage for the first time in a while, but it's been really nice to have these training partners and have people to push me. And it definitely just like brings up the energy level. Mm -hmm. Like overall, like anybody who, like if you've done a workout at home in your garage by yourself versus going to class, it's a huge difference. Just like with the atmosphere environment and environment. And um, sometimes at home it is kind of nice to just put the headphones in and get to work. But it is definitely much more fun whenever you can be around other people and have them to push with. And like we did the open workout and there's three of us going and uh, getting cheered on by Tia and the Sydney's and the coaches and then getting to cheer them on afterwards. Yeah. It's, it's way more fun. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of afterwards, I mean, you were done and dusted before anyone else. Mm. You absolutely crushed that one. You guys will see that next Mm. week. Uh, But so let's jump in, jump into the workout. So you Mm. and Luis did it side by side. You both Mm. crushed it. What'd you think of it? It was good. Um, Luis did really, really well. We were neck and neck for like most of the of most of the workout, um, so I was really impressed with that. And um, yeah, we did it with the clock behind us, so I couldn't see the time at all, which is probably good because like in my mind, I'm like, oh gosh, I'm probably about to come up on like the time that I'm trying to hit. So that helped me push a lot harder at the end. And yeah, once you get through like the twenty ones, just had that feeling of being like that kind of pukey, thick, sick feeling. But it wasn't uh, terrible as far as like muscular fatigue goes or cardiovascular fatigue uh, for the most part. Yeah, but um, yeah, once you get through the 21s, it's like, okay, I'm kind of almost done. Like I said, the 15 yeah. and 9s left, and it's not too bad. So what do you – we got week two coming up. You are going mm-hmm. to do the open announcement live. Are mm-hmm. you excited for that? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it will be a great opportunity. Not a lot of people get to go to Justin's – home gym and beat him in front of his friends and family. So, I mean, that'll be a blast, I'm sure. Yeah, you don't <laughs> take it easy on him. You just lay the smack down there. So it's going to be – when did they reach out for you? Like, how have you? How long have you known about this? Um, they asked if I want to do the workout. It might have – it was a couple – probably two or three months ago. And then I told him, like, yeah, I'm in. We didn't find out a lot of details about it until – Maybe six weeks ago. Did they tell you where like it would be, or did they just ask if you wanted to do it? No, they just asked me if I wanted to do it. And Was it an immediate yes? Did mm-hmm. you know you wanted to do it? Yeah, I emailed them back that evening, <laughs> told them I'm in, and then they, it was a little while after that, I had to sign like an NDA or whatever and all that stuff, and then they reached out with the details. It's going to be against Justin at his home gym and all that stuff uh, several weeks later, and yeah, it's just been, it's been Something I'm really looking forward to. And then the week after that, going out to Charlotte to beat up on Taylor Self a little bit. It's going to be a good open for you, man. It's <laughs> yeah. just like a beat down after beat down. So next week, we got burpees out of the way. We got dumbbell mm-hmm. snatches out of the way. What would mm-hmm. you like to see in front of – everyone's going to be watching, the whole world. I hope we get some high-volume squatting of some sort and maybe uh, maybe heavy lift. Well, Dave's back, so I think mm-hmm. the high volume squatting may be there. <laughs> Maybe you, squat clean ladder, that'd be good. That'd be very good. That'd yeah. Be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's so we're talking about the open? What's your best finish you ever had? Last year I got third overall. And then mm-hmm. did you win any workouts last year? No, I think the best I've ever got on an individual workout. I think I've had a few top fives, but I've never won an individual one. Until mm-hmm. oh, this year. Yeah. Get, get that mm-hmm. on the board for sure. <laughs> 
So yeah, man, this is uh, this has been awesome to have you. Mm-hmm. This has been something that, like I said, is kind of full circle for the two of mm-hmm. us. We've known each other for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Couldn't ask for a better person to be in this camp. I think we've had a lot of changes mm-hmm. this year. It's something we spoke about early on to where mm-hmm. moving forward, we just want to have people that can not only do really well as an athlete and elevate their mm-hmm. careers when it comes to their professional um, aspect of, of the CrossFit games, but we also want to elevate the level of our whole camp. And that's something mm-hmm. where I know these guys being around you and our younger athletes as well can learn a lot from what we talked about. And even just the hard work that you've put in and can kind of demonstrate to these guys is something we should all aspire to be. Um, I know Shane I have talked about that time and time again, and that's a real big reason we wanted to work mm. with you. Uh, is there anything that you want to share with the people? Like, is there anything you want to plug in the meantime? I know um, I've actually been talking to Troy at Valor Fit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's one of those guys that will be here on the last week. He's been somebody that's been singing your praises as mm. well. He's another Iowa guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, man, if you got anything, that would be great. Yeah, um, just, yeah, I've been really grateful to be here and be a part of this camp. And I've already learned a lot and benefited personally a lot from it. And, it's been great to come here for the open and see all you guys and yeah it's just so much different in person getting to meet everybody and hang out with like tia and shane uh, in person for the first time has been really great and just the hospitality has been amazing so really thankful for that and uh <clears throat> yeah thank you detroit and Firefit for getting me out here it's been uh a great opportunity and um yeah i mean we got the as far as stuff to plug we got the custom blend of coffee from Paper Street. Here we go. Paper with the, Street, with the Wiener Dog T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. We got uh, the, the Unbroken Belt with Two Pood and Unbroken Barbell with uh, Hero Barbell all available as well. Yeah. Uh, mm. What's your Instagram tag? Uh, I think it's just Colton underscore Mertens. Yeah, go follow this man. Mm-hmm. You can follow along on our Instagram as well. Brandon's mm-hmm. going to have some really cool content of the open mm-hmm. workout that was today and then some YouTube stuff as well. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, where we'll sign it off. All right. See you guys next time.